Over the last few months, Microsoft Excel has released many new features. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at seven of these features, including things like Python and proper checkboxes. If you've learned something new, I would appreciate it if you just write it into the comments below and consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's start with checkboxes and we have a number of different tasks over here. So what we want to do is just check and add, let's add Monday all the way up to the end of the week. So let's go to Sunday. Now we could just center this up and we could just make this bigger or smaller as we want. We can just write tasks complete here. So we can just add that and we can write the progress here. Now, in the old days, what we used to do is go across to the developer mode and then have an add in and then you would insert and you would use a form controls like this. Now with this, there are a lot of complications. So Excel has now a new feature and you simply just go across to the insert tab and in the insert tab, you're going to scroll along and find the checkbox right here. So now you've simply just added that. Now you can just take that and move it along and you can then just drag it down to add the checkboxes. So what you will notice here is when you click into the checkbox, you'll find that the value is false. But when you check it, it gives you a true value. This means that we can have a lot of data manipulation when we want and have formulas are based on this. Now, the other thing is you can simply highlight these and you can change the colors behind it. You can change the colors there and you can change it into whatever format you want. Now let's change it to something a bit more pleasant and that would be a green color. Now what we can do is use a feature here. So we can use a count if function right here, equals count if. Now let's select our range right here. And if the range here is selected, and we want to make sure that this is true. And if this is true, we want it to return the amount. So there you go. We have a number of tasks that are now complete here. So let's test this out. Let's click Wednesday and let's click Friday. So we can simply drag this formula down. And as you see, as we check off the different tasks, this allows us to count the tasks in this row. Now, what we could also do is manage the progress right here. So let's just check everything right here and we can do the progress. So what we will do is have this number of tasks, which are now completed by the default formula divided by seven to get a percentage. So when we drag that down, we'll see that we have a decimal. Let's change that to percentage format, center that. Now what we can do is use conditional formatting to have a look at color scales or color bars right here. So you can actually see bars coming up right here. Now, if you do remove this, you'll see that the maximum value still goes all the way up and there are hacks around this. Watch the other video to find out a bit more about checkboxes. The second feature we'll have a look at are searchable dropdowns. Now, data validation is pretty important in Excel. And how do we do this? Let's highlight the cells where we want the data to come. We go to data and we go across to data validation. And when you click onto that, you have a pop up right here. So we go down to list and now we have a source of the list. So we're going to tell it all of the data that we want over here. And if you notice, you have fruit and veg twice. Now let's see what's going to happen here. Press OK. And now next to the boxes, you have a little checkbox arrow here. And what you can see is fruit and veg only appears once. So not, uh, not only does the searchable drop down, remove duplicates, but it also allows you now to type in. So there you go. You have fruit and veg there and you can type dairy and you can type in electronics. So there you go. Now, Python in Excel is one of the newest features. This brings a powerful capability of an online coding platform right here into Excel. But let's see how we can use this in Excel. So we can easily just go across to 
formulas and in formulas you have the icon here for python so we can insert it right here and it brings up the python box over here so if we can just drag this and open it up you can see you can switch between the python object and an excel value essentially a python object is where all your data is going to get compressed now in python we're going to tell it to take our data set right here and add it to our python code now here with python you need to press ctrl enter to execute and let's go back to the top with Python and Excel, there are many restrictions right now as the code is now being processed in an online server in Python. Now, these lead to a lot of errors, things like busy, and we need to unfortunately wait for these to be executed before we can take this to the next level. After some time, you get a cell which says a data frame right here. And what this essentially means, it's compacted your data, which is held in an Excel uh, data sheet right here into a compacted format called the data frame. Now, if we look to the left side of it, you show, show card, you can see that's the data frame gives you a snippet of your data, which is held right now in the open source of Anaconda in Python, which is now ready to be used in the different libraries. Now, if we go to the right side, you have an insert data and that simply can give you an array preview. So that gives you the first five and the last five data sets or items that you have within your data frame. Now, what we can do is have your data frame referenced into something, whatever you want. So you can call it my data frame and you can basically equal it to this. So now what that will do is allow you to be able to reference my data frame. So let's go back to a Python code and you can just simply type in my data frame. And now instead of typing the cell reference or saying the whole data, once again, you simply need to type in whatever name you have referred to, to your data. So let's do the simplest thing, which is my data frame dot describe. And what this does is let's just close the brackets and control enter. Now, as you see, it takes a while for that to execute. And now your data frame has a data here. So if you look at it here, you can see the card and it shows you data right here. And if you click on insert data array preview, you can see that there are some descriptions here, which is standard and gives you the data in a more compacted form and simply just describing your data. Now we won't go into the details of Python, but there are a number of different things you can do within Python, including grouping your data within some form of grouping and as well as having charts and different visualizations from the different libraries that are available in Python. If you want to know more about Python, then watch my video on Python in Excel to learn more. The fourth thing we have a look at are add-ins. Now simply go across on the home tab or right here to add-ins and these are just little third party uh, programs that you can add into your current Excel. So you can search, we have here Wikipedia, which is a very interesting one. So let's just press OK, go through the terms and conditions and you simply have a Wikipedia right here in Excel. Population of world wide countries and let's see what that returns us so you don't need to go up to any other countries and have a look so you can just have a look at average human height per country this is a simple way to use add-ins now another one that i like to use is also a date picker and this one just helps when you're typing in a whole a load of dates so let's just add to that right in and let's move that across you can simply use your add-in right here by simply just choosing the date picker right here. Another one that I use frequently is called the QR code. We search QR right here and you'll find a QR code tracker. This is the one that I found the most reliable QR4 for Office. Continue and you can simply type in if you want it to go to Google, for example, 
and you can have a look at what it looks like and you can change the font and colors as you want. This really helps instead of paying for expensive software. Another cool feature in Excel are formulas, the group by and the pivot by. So we'll have a look at the group by function. What this avoids now is you making a complicated pivot table or grouping by different ways. And you can simply use the formula group by. So what we need to do here, the syntax is you go to the, the row or the column that you want to use as the grouping. So we're going to choose the department right here. And as we scroll back to the top, we have the group. Once we press the comma, we want the values. Where are the values sitting? So you can choose the quantity, the unit price, and the total. And here we could just select all three. So press that. And now how do you want it to present? As a sum, an average of percentage. So usually you would have a sum right here. Once you press comma, you can also have a look at the headers. And what it's asking you here is, do you want to show your headers or not? So we are just going to simply click, click through here to have a look at the headers. And the next thing is, do you want it to total up? We want grand and subtotals, subtotals at the top, or do we want anything else? But let's just go and click on grand totals. Now, once we click onto that, we can do the sort order. So do we want to sort by the first column, the second column, or the third column? We're going to look at the total revenue here. So we're going to sort it by the third column. Now, when you put in a positive number, it will by default have an ascending order, but we want it in a descending order, meaning we want the highest value at the top. So in this case, we would have to put a minus three right here. And now if you want to filter it for anything, you can add a filter, but that's not unnecessary in the syntax. You can close the bracket and voila, we have a table sorted by the highest of revenue right here. Another cool feature here is taking data and using a screenshot to insert the data into your Excel sheet. So we have a world of meters information here and we want to take this into our Excel sheet without having to copy or paste or simply trying to select the data. So we're going to do a screen clip and in Windows, the shortcut is Windows button shift and an S and it brings up the snipping tool right here. So just select the data that we want. Let's go up to the Mexico right here. And now we have a screenshot right here. Let's move to our Excel sheet. And once we're here, we simply can go across to insert. And we are going to have a look at how to insert the data. So we go across to data and we go to the little tab here, get and transform data. Now we select the little arrow here from clipboard is what we need. Now that takes the screenshot and it starts to analyze the data right here. And what you will find is that it's not perfect, but you can go in and select some of the data. Let's insert the data. And it says we still review seven, but we're going to insert it anyway. So as you can see here, the data has been selected and you can basically see that it's a pretty good version. Now we have a few things missing here, like the ones and a few data here, but overall, this really helps you when you want to extract data from a screenshot. Lastly, we have the easiest thing to do, which is a table of contents. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have automatically populate all your tabs below without having to search every single one? So we simply need to go across to the view tab and we can then have a look at the navigation right here. When you click on that, it gives you all of the different tables and tabs that you have within your table. Now, if we click into this, you can see that there is a picture so you can even select the elements within. Now, when you click into Python, you can have a look at all the different data there and the searchable drop down. So all the different ranges, tables, pictures, images, or any other data that is within every single tab that you have. Thanks for watching this video and if you've learned something new, I would appreciate if you could just put a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, happy spreadsheeting.